Welcome to the Global Thermomechanical Laboratory. Here we carry out thermomechanical testing, that is the combination of mechanical working and heat treatment. We study the formability of metallic materials and metal-based composites. By formability, I mean how easy it is to shape different metals or metal-based composites. So the Glebo itself contains a number of options. The first that we'll talk about is the console, which controls everything that happens on the Glebo. So this is like the brain of the Glebo. Then we have what we call the main load unit, which um, receives the information from the console and executes it. And we have the mobile conversion units that can be divided into two. On installation now is the hydro wedge, which I am touching here. We can actually remove this part and bring in the second mobile conversion unit that is called the pocket jaw. I will show you that in just one second. So I would like to show you the second mobile conversion unit, which is the pocket jaw. I showed you the hydro wedge earlier. So this is the pocket jaw. With the pocket jaw, you can carry out a number of tests like heat affected zone simulations. You can also carry out stress induced crack opening tests. You could also carry out hot tensile testing and many other tests. But the most common test that you use the Glebo for is the flow stress test. And that is, that is done on the hydro wedge. And that is the main reason that we have the hydro wedge installed today. And I'll be showing you how the hydro wedge is being used to carry out the flow stress test. Either you're using the hydro wedge or pocket jaw, you can control the environment you're using for the test. You can carry out your test using an argon environment or nitrogen environment or even a CO2 environment. So we have these argon bottles here that are attached to the hydro wedge currently. If we were to carry out a test on titanium, for example, you want to carry that out on the argon environment to prevent the contamination of oxygen. But then you could also carry out the test on under vacuum conditions. And that's why the Glebo also acts its own vacuum. So this is the vacuum pump of the Glebo. It actually has two pumps, the rotary pump for rough vacuum and the diffusion pump for very high vacuum. So, um, you can control your environment when you're carrying out hot deformation test on the Glebo. By hot deformation, I mean thermomechanical testing on the Glebo. The Glebo has other accessories that makes it function well. The first one I would like to talk about is the chiller. It is not on this floor, it is on the basement, but it's being controlled by this small box. Uh, this box controls the chiller and the chiller helps Glebo to perform all the cooling operations that comes during and after thermomechanical testing. The next accessory I want to show you is the compressed air tank. So the Glebo needs here water and electricity to function well. So this tank contains the air that the Glebo needs to move some of the hydro, some of the anvils and of course the jaw. As I've mentioned earlier, there are lots of tests you could carry out on the Glebo, and this needs different accessories. The boxes you see here contains all the accessories that you might need for the different tests that you will be carrying out. The test we're carrying out today is the flow stress test, and all the necessary accessories that will be needed for this test have been installed on the Glebo. And I will be pointing to some of these accessories as we continue with the test. When a component uh, is subjected to stresses that vary with time, it's likely to fail at stress, stresses much lower than the static strength of the material. This phenomena is termed fatigue, and fatigue is responsible for approximately 90% of all surface failures. To 
mitigate against fatigue, we must determine the properties, the fatigue properties of the material. Three such properties are the SN test, the low circle fatigue test, and the fatigue crack growth test, which we are going to demonstrate. We start with the SN test. The SN test is also called the rating bedding test. And in this test, we determine, we take a specimen, load it until it fails, and determine the stress S against the number of circles that is required to cause the specimen to fail, which is N. Now, from this, the SN curve of the material, S for stress, N for number of circles, is plotted, and uh, from this we determine the endurance limit of the material, sigma endurance. Sigma endurance is that stress below which the material will not fail. This is the SN uh, test. The specimen is of this form, yeah? and we are going to apply a bending moment on it while rotating it. In that way, the stress varies from a maximum positive value to a maximum negative value. Now, in the machine, the specimen is there, and we are going to rotate it. We are going to set the stress and rotate it until it fails. So, when the specimen fails, we will record the stress that we have used against the number of circles that it takes to fail. When, that, when one specimen is done, we will repeat the same specimen, we will repeat the same experiment with a different specimen but the lower stress. And we we'll continue doing this until we reach a level at which the specimen does not fail. We plot, at the end of the day, we plot a graph showing the stress against the number of circles to failure. It is called the SN curve. The second of the test is the low circle fatigue test. This involves situations where the number of stress circles to failure is low. And um.